I'd like to start with a shout out today because today's motion has been suggested by Quasi Hankins, who's not only one of our first listeners, he is also a active podcaster himself and runs an amazing network of podcasts. So if you look for new content, give the Podwebit network a try. Hello everyone, this is yet another episode of 2debate.net. I am Sebastian, and in front of me on the screen is a dunk. How are you today? I'm looking forward to our debate. And what is the debate today? Uh, today we debate uh, a motion that was suggested by Quasi. Quasi is uh, one of our early listeners who never fails to comment on our episodes. And he suggested to debate whether or not boycotts are an effective form of protest. Okay, and I, and I think with the flip of the coin, you're going to defend the motion, you're going to be in favor of the motion, and you're going to start. Yes, that is absolutely true. That means that you think boycotts are a waste of time, and you will, uh, you will use your I second mover advantage, right? <laughs> I will certainly use my second mover advantage, but do not put words in my mouth. I will not say, actually, that boycotts are, are a waste of time. I keep forgetting. What is actually better, being first mover or second mover? What is your preferred option? My, prefer my preference, because we got into the habit of it at the very beginning, is to be second. Mm -hmm. You start exposing yourself with your argument, and then you cannot have the final word. I love that. <laughs> it's usually this kind of stuff that happens in relationships, right? Like yeah. if you can have the final word, you feel better. Well, yeah, I actually, that's it's the so point, right? To stay you, quiet. you just love to have the final word. That's actually the whole point. <laughs> no matter if you're if you're winning or losing. Exactly. <laughs> just it's just the feel good feel feel good moment at the very end. Um, just to check because we we uh, looked at our stats and I've seen that some of the uh, the debates are shifting around. Which, uh, which makes me very happy, I have to say. It gives me numbers to crunch in our dashboard. Um, but also what we discussed was that some debates seem to lead to a political correct voting, right? So you, you doubt that all the, the votes are actually the opinions of the people. No, I'm, I'm not saying it's not the votes of the people. It's just that we tend to vote according to what we think is politically correct. So it's maybe difficult either to really think through what you'd like to support, which side you'd like to support sometimes. It's like the default uh, vote that you would go with. I'll give you the, the example right before we, we start recording. We, we chatted about one of the debates we recorded was about whether governments should have access to private data. And these days, governments have such a bad reputation, irrespective of any topic, that it's very. I, I would find it very difficult to find anyone who's supportive of a government. It sounds like just dreadful. To be supportive of a government, not 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 you're not supportive of, of democracy and that kind of stuff, but just you know opinion polls in favor of governments these days are very terrible. So when you talk when you add this to private data, uh, it's it's like you know the perfect combination of uh, of emotion for which it's very difficult to say you're in favor of. So my 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 position, my thesis is that it's going to be very difficult for any of us. Um, to defend a very controversial position uh, and get the votes for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, what I was trying to get at then is, is our motion today, boycotts are an effective form of protest, one of these controversials? Or would you say, uh, or is, it, is there a political correct answer? What do you think? Uh, no, I think it's very balanced. I think everyone will vote that uh, it's not an effective form of protest. It's quite obvious. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not controversial. <laughs> it's not too controversial to vote that it's okay you can you can safely vote no for that motion today ah uh, you start that game again so i Which see game? what you're doing i see what you're doing <laughs> our listeners are very smart and intelligent they're not influenced by what i say are they <laughs> uh yes of course they are smart um i'm not playing our listeners like some others on this podcast <laughs> i just trust their judgment and they follow the me better too. argument me too but no <laughs> go ahead let's do this okay Let's do this. Dirk goes first and argues for the motion. Are boycotts an effective form of protest? Of course they are, but under special circumstance. And that is maybe something we need to sort first. 
When we look at the history of boycotts, we find plenty of boycotts that seem to have failed where people were calling for a stop of um, engaging in business with somebody. After the whole thing disappeared from the press, nothing seemed to have changed, nothing seemed to have happened. And there are, there are a number of examples on this. The reason why boycotts are still a very effective form of protest is because they depend on being done the right way to the right businesses. So if you boycott the right business in the right way, They can be extremely sharp weapons. And there are countless examples out there where boycotts actually did exactly what the, boy, uh, the people calling for the boycotts hoped they would do. There are examples like, for instance, a boycott to Nike to change their, their, the, the, the labor practices in Nike supply chain. And those boycotters directly hurt Nike's brand value and Nike to the day struggles to recover from that. There have been similar boycotts brought forward to Apple, for instance, that led to significant changes actually in Foxconn and, and other companies in the supply chain. We are still not where we want to be, but boycotts to selected companies in an in a organized, structured way seem to be effective. And... These examples show two things. First off, you need to be selective who you boycott. Then the question is, who is boycotting? And the third point is, is it something people and mass media really cares about? If these three criteria are, are balanced out well, then yes, then boycotts are an effective form of protest. Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear his argument. You're still with me? Yeah, I'm still here. You're stunned. I'm just boycotting this motion. Yeah. <laughs> I will let me silent for the next two minutes. <laughs> All right. So I start the clock and then I listen to you not Let's talking. Let's start the clock. <laughs> Let's push it to the extreme. It was actually not a joke. I protest against this motion and let's see how effective my point is. I'm just going to boycott this motion, this debate, and let's see if I make that my point this way. Let's see if it's effective. I'm going to remain silent. Here we go. Of course I'm not going to remain silent. I'm Sebastian. I can't remain silent. Anyway, my point, it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. Does the current boycott against Israel work? Have you even heard there's a boycott against Israeli products? Most probably no. And what about this fascistic attitude that some people have had, some artists, against my beloved music group Radiohead, which went ahead and had a concert in Tel Aviv a few months ago, if I'm not mistaken, And they refuse to boycott and say they have nothing to do with politics. They're just playing for their fans. So clearly we're mixing signals. And in any case, there's no actual value in boycotting Israel in this case because it's a very cynical agenda. Israel or companies, it amounts to the same thing. The reason I say this is because everyone has their agenda. Everyone has a reason to use a specific product. And if it goes against their interest, they're not going to boycott that product. Or... If they find an alternative, then they'll happily boycott the first company's product, the one that they want to, the, 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 the company they want to boycott, only because there, there are alternatives available. It also doesn't really work in general because you would have to convince a lot of people. And as I said, everyone has a conflicting, conflicting agenda and it's all very, very cynical. So um, one more thing I'd like to add in terms of argument. There's indeed a difference between um, state-run maybe boycotts or professional boycotts and very amateur boycotts. But in all cases, you will find that they're not very effective. The boycott of Americans against French wines, that didn't work that well. The French wine industry was pretty not unaffected by it. Or the US boycott against South Africa, likewise. There were many ways to go around and escape the boycott by South Africa. So a lot of cynicism around all this concept of boycott. And I'll answer your specific arguments in my three minutes afterwards. So no, boycotts are not really an effective form of protest. You can give it up. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. You know what? For plenty of the examples that you list that didn't work, I can bring an example where it did work. So the question is not, are boycotts always an effective form of protest? There are failed boycotts. Now, HBR lists a couple of criteria that, after studying the field, seem to be typical for successful boycotts. And they actually apply to the examples you brought forward as well. For instance, uh, a boycott is more likely to be successful if the product that's being boycotted is something easy to replace. So 
it's more likely that you succeed boycotting a, a grocery chain than it is to boycott Disney because the movies have simply no alternative. If you want to watch Frozen, there is only one company that gives you Frozen. There is not, you cannot go to Warner Brothers and say, give me Frozen. But if you, if you want to buy milk, well, there are plenty of stores that sell you milk. There are plenty of brands out there. So it's more likely if you have a selection, a choice. And that's the reason why boycotts against grocers, against items like shoes, clothing, or yes, companies like Shell tend to work very well. And that's the reason why uh, boycotts against entertainment industry tends to not work very well. Other things. Is it an issue people care about? There's something to be said about things that people claim to care about and the reality. If you manage to boycott something out of reasons that are A, easy to understand, and B, something the, the people really care about, and care about enough so it becomes a mass media thing, then you have an extremely high probability to actually make a dent. And there, there's a reason why companies out there care so much about customer feedback and about not creating a bad reputation online and about avoiding shitstorms and whatnot. And the reason is, it is a sharp sword. But it's not a sharp sword for everything in every situation. And these days, there's an abundance of cause to boycott. I'm, I'm totally with you on that. Just because everybody claims to have something worth boycotting doesn't mean that, that this is really effective. But there are cases where people are going after companies in a very structured way. And these cases tend to be successful. The way to tell them apart is uh, you ask yourself who is boycotting. And there's one example that I can give you that actually recently worked fairly well. And that was the firing of one of the hosts in, in Fox News. That was done after the, the advertisement buyers actually boycotted Fox. And after enough of them did that very publicly, and there is plenty of choices to get uh, your news from, after all that happened, actually the guy lost his job. And that is a successful story for a boycott. And there are other examples that I leave for my last minute. Sebastian, let's hear it. Actually, most boycotts fail. It's not about looking at whether they're they always or never fail. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the studies and the data points and everything, but there have been studies in that area. But I'm going to make a more extreme point than just saying they're mostly a failure. I'm going to say they always fail on one specific account because you try to find excuses. You say, oh, we have to look into special circumstances. That's what you said in your first two minutes. And then you said, oh, we need to look at the who and the what and everything. And for me, these are like these are excuses. Let me give you an, an angle, which is very clear, very simple, which shows you that actually it means the boycotts are, 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 are always a failure. And that angle is to say, indeed, what is the goal that the boycott is trying to achieve? And I'm claiming that a boycott, especially against companies, is not so much to change the practice of that company as much as raising a wider issue. You mentioned Nike. I had this one on my back burner, just waiting for you, waiting for you to bring it up. Nike. The issue is not so much Nike using child labor in the 90s. It's child labor full stop. And that's the problem. The problem by focusing all the media attention on Nike, it makes the problem disappear when it has not. So the boycott is actually counterproductive. As I always say in my emotions and my debates, it's actually dangerous. The boycott is a dangerous mechanism because it shifts the debate away from saying child labor is existing in many companies, not just Nike, by pointing the finger at one company and making it seem that once you have fixed that, you fixed everything. Same thing with Fox News. It's maybe with the one specific problem, but you will have dumb heads in every company, in every media company, and you just shift the problem away. And I think this is the major reason why boycotts are a failure and why why uh, we can't actually use that as an effective form of protest. Yes, you may change a tiny, tiny thing, but overall it's going to be counterproductive. Added to that, the point that I made about the cynicism of it, that you're not going to defend a cause which goes counter to your interest, I think is a very selfish and cynical way of looking at things. And you have other alternatives. It's not as if you know you can't do anything about fighting against Nike. Right. You can actually fight in court. You can do uh, media documentaries about the topic. I am not recommending it, but you can go violent. This is a, just opening up the, the possibility for another debate. Again, not recommending violence, just saying it is an alternative. Um, you can go to elections. You can change the law. Right? You run up for elections and say, you know what? Companies which use child labor 
will be forbidden from this country. You will not be able to sell. It's even more powerful than a boycott. So you have many different alternatives possible than a boycott, which I claim is counterproductive and even dangerous to the issues you yourself, Doug, are defending uh, via the, the, the various examples you've provided, and which I'm in also defending, right? I'm against child labor. It's obvious. But I don't think boycotts are, are, are helpful in this case. Completely counterproductive and dangerous. Thank you for not supporting the motion today. Final statements. It's Dirk's turn. Oh boy, what a strawman argument. Actually, I can take the same argument that you just took and flip it completely around and use it for my side. So you have one more minute to do it one more time. Uh, I could basically say with making Nike the poster child of child labor abuse and by forcing Nike to change his practices, you make it harder for all the other companies to have similar practices. You highlight the issue for everyone around and you make sure that people uh, consider that in their practices. And this is actually what happened in reality. And there are other examples like this. No, I'm not calling for special circumstance. I'm just telling you there are criteria what makes a boycott successful. And they are brought up in studies, they are proven, and the examples show these things. And there are important civil rights issues that started with a boycott. The story of Rosa Parks, her issue started a boycott, and that boycott had very severe changes um, uh, as a result. So I would say it's not calling out special circumstances, it's just saying there are criteria that make boycott successful, and yes, they are an effective form of protest. <laughs> Sebastian. Rosa Parks, actually, I claim these were also special circumstances in a civil rights movement. She was just one episode in a wider phenomenon. So I disagree on that. Let's focus on the child labor aspect. Has child labor disappeared? Most likely not. Are we talking about it? Absolutely not. We're not talking about it anymore, in the, at least not in the textile industry. And I'm sure it's still happening in the major markets. So I consider boycotts a cynical form of protest, an ineffective form of protest, and a dangerous one, shifting the discussion away from what really matters. So uh, in summary, I would say you have plenty of alternatives which are more effective, which you can consider. Uh, refusing to trade with others or refusing to use uh, another a country's uh, products may actually hurt you more than the in, in, in initial intent, something I had not mentioned before. So you, it has unintended consequences to actually use that form of, of protest, which I claim are overall more negative than positive. And I don't care about studies and their criteria. I'm telling you my criteria, and that's the one that it deserves the overall purpose of the issue. Okay, thank you for listening. This was another interesting debate. Thank you for suggesting it. And uh, you can vote on todebate.net or todebate.eu to please my counterpart, my co-host, because .eu is the European domain. So you can go and vote. Uh, you can vote no or yes um, or no. And, uh, <laughs> or yes, I may say. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and to Kwesi, I like to say that uh, it was me who put this debate right on the on our our planning document. Yeah, so um, consider your vote, Kwesi. <laughs> and it was it, and it was I who accepted to debate it. <laughs> <laughs> so you can add your comments online. We even have now the stuff on YouTube. You can get to iTunes. You can vote. Thanks again for listening, and tune in for the next debate in uh, in a short while. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. So I could now boycott the boycott of your boycott. Let's see if that works. <laughs> if that works for you, go ahead. You can remain silent. I'll use my three minutes. Okay, no. take my three minutes. No, 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 no. My you just friend. Waved your right for your three minutes. Uh, 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 I didn't. <laughs> I didn't say that I'm waving my right for my three minutes. I'm on the motion today. We can debate about it if you want. But the, uh, everything is better if done in a bathtub, or what is the motion? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was not the motion today. The bathtub shower thingy has nothing to do, to do with boycott. <laughs>
And so you don't boycott showers. That's that's good to, I, and a well, relief to hear. So you know the repetition of the French: we don't shower more than once a month, and we do that in the in the Seine, right? In the Seine Actually, River in I Paris. Never heard that before as a stereotype. Really? So I learned something. No. Really? I know plenty of stereotypes regarding the French, but this is not a one I heard of before. Okay. <laughs> Great. Fantastic. That is not going to pop up there. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, okay. Who wants to believe the, the smelly French guy when you can have the, the credit? <laughs> not have scent. No smell with a podcast. You will lose that debate, but you will lose it very, very With closely. With Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my only hope. <laughs> By the way, I also like to mention that from now on, you cannot credibly claim that that crazy is on my side. That was like three times in a row that he gives the nod <coughs> to you. <laughs> I noticed. I... Yeah. I... <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs>